Welcome to the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. And today here in Omaha, it's day three of the College World Series as Texas takes on Louisville. Augie Garrido's team trying to avoid elimination. Same story on the Louisville side. That's the drama as one team will be going home. It's Texas and Louisville here today. Take a look at our brackets now. And we have Texas going up against Louisville later tonight. In the winter side, it'll be Vanderbilt and UC Irvine. And coming up on Tuesday, Texas Tech and Old Miss in an elimination game. And then the two national seeds that are here, TCU and Virginia. All right, folks, thanks for joining us. John Shambi alongside Aaron Boone. The Texas Longhorns, their 35th appearance here at the College World Series. On the other side, it is Louisville, the only returning team from last year's College World Series. Focus on Texas, though, a team six in the nation in ERA, lean on their pitching, but they got to get the offense going, and it starts with the number three guy in the order. Yeah, the senior, Mark Payton, probably Texas's best all-around player. In game one of the College World Series, he failed to reach base, and that snapped a streak of 101 consecutive games remarkable when you think about it where he did not reach base if Texas is going to stave off elimination Mark Payton figures to have a big afternoon all right on the other side we talk a lot about small ball in this college world series Texas actually leads the nation in sacrifice bunts one other aspect speed Louisville has it yeah Louisville arguably the most athletic team in the college world series as a group 132 stolen bases on the season Sutton Whiting their fine shortstop led the team with 37 stolen bases if Parker French the starting pitcher for the Texas Longhorns doesn't do a good job of holding these runners on they will look to force the issue they will look to run early and they will look to run off and John Shambi now one team will be looking to survive and hang out here in Omaha another team going home it's Louisville and Texas first pitch coming up The NCAA College World Series is presented by the Quicksilver Card from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. Back here in Omaha as we get ready for an elimination game. It's Texas taking on Louisville here at TD Ameritrade Park. John Chambi and Aaron Boone. And time now to welcome in the third member of our team. We send it down to Jamie Sire. Thanks so much, John. Talking about this Texas team and the senior leadership is huge on this squad. It all starts with Nate Thornhill and Mark Payton. Both were drafted after last season, but both of them decided to stick around for their senior year. They each told me the same thing. They felt it was really important to help get this program back to where it belongs. We would not be here without Nate Thornhill and Mark Payton. We're going to Omaha talk about the sacrifices that they made to help this program get back to Omaha. We struggled for two years and he didn't want to go out as a loser. He wanted to come out as a winner. So you know, me and Nate decided to come back together and we obviously can't put a price tag on coming to Omaha. So we thought it wasn't worth skipping out for our last year. We're a lot tougher mentally than we were the last two years. We have a great group of young freshmen who have contributed in major ways. We have a strong group of upperclassmen too. So with that combination, I think, and the attitude change, it's why we're here now. We're all locked in, we're focused, and we're together playing as one. It can be a great ending if we take care of business. And the senior leadership does not stop there. You've got two other guys who were starters their entire career here at Texas. In fact, they're both on the 2011 team that was here in Omaha. Alex Silver and Jacob Feltz. And both of them have accepted their role on the bench this year. And Coach Garrido says it is that unselfish attitude that has allowed this team to be successful, guys. Well, they need to win here today. The Longhorns do one of these teams is fixing to go home. Time now for our Capital One starting lineups. And for Texas, we talked about Mark Payton, but Brooks Marlowe, a guy that sets the table on the year, a 392 on base percentage. Tress Barrera leads him in homers with five. The guy that's really been hot, C.J. Hinojosa in the NCAA tournament at 440. He is 11 out of 25. That lineup will go up against the right-hander for Louisville, Anthony Kidston on the mound, Aaron Boone. Yeah, making his 14th start of the season. He's 9-0 on the year with a 3.54 earned run average. A very good athlete on the mound, extremely competitive, Fastball, curveball changes. Best pitch 
something we'll see a lot today is a very good straight change. One other thing to hit on here as far as Louisville, they lost Jared Ruxer earlier this year. He was clearly their number two starter. He's a guy, with all due respect to Kitston, that would normally be starting in this spot. He is done for the year with Tommy John surgery. You're talking about a guy in 13 starts, Ruxer went 7-1 and one and a 2.27 ERA. So an undermanned Louisville team. Yeah, and, and a hallmark of a lot of these teams is that we get a look at him with the surgically repaired right arm. Somebody stepping up when adversity strikes a ball team. Kitson has done that to the tune of a 9-0 record. So ready to roll on a windy day in Omaha. The okay. wind blowing in. It looks like it'll be another tough day for the hitters. As Brooks Marlowe gets ready to step to the plate. Aaron in their loss against UC Irvine 3-1. They left 12 on base and a lot of opportunities early. They did and this is a team that when they do get base runners on as you touched on love to sacrifice bunt get runners into scoring position. They're going to have to cash in if they want to extend their stay in Omaha. And a strike to get it started to Brooks Marlowe. Marlowe, their junior second baseman, very good defensive player. Ball. And the count even up. Yep. Speaking with head coach Dan McDonald, one of the things that he said, ideally they'd like to go Kidston to Sturgeon to Birdie. That's basically the way they'd like it to, to happen today. Ball. Yeah, Sturgeon, they're fine. Yeah. All around player in the outfield. Uh, really, they put it as in a perfect world, Sturgeon would bridge that gap to their outstanding closer, Birdie. Into center field. There's Sturgeon coming on, and he makes a grab. What a play. Cole Sturgeon getting things started here this afternoon. Well, we might see him on the mound in the middle of this ball game, but. An outstanding read on this ball in center field. A little bit of a circular route, but the break. Watch him off the bat right away, breaking straight in and then lining it up and the dive straight forward. Nice play to start this game for Cole Sturgeon and Louisville. A top 10 nominee. I'm with you. Yeah, I nominate. That's a play oh, there that out. is typically the toughest for a center fielder. That line drive right at him. A lot of times you'll see even at the big yeah, league level, a false step minutes. backwards or there. Sturgeon, a good job of coming right in and making that play. Ball. Kidston falling behind Ben Johnson, 2 and 0. Oh. Johnson, a left fielder. No. The strongest and the fastest guy on this team. Yeah, he's the burner. This is not a guy you want to put on 21 for 21 and stolen bases on the season. That is ripped into left. A one hop laser. Yeah, you see the athleticism there, the strength, the bat speed, jumping on a 2 0 pitch up in the strike zone and hammering it to left field, and then very quick down the line. And now you've got to worry about him as he jumped on a little fastball at the top of the strike zone. And at 86 miles an hour, that's a very good pitch to hit. And this ball is laced into left field. Peyton now a good guy in this spot because typically a guy will see a lot of pitches will give Johnson an opportunity if he can get a jump. And immediately Kidston trying to keep Johnson close again 21 for 21 for Johnson. And Mark Peyton a draft pick of the Yankees in this past draft seventh rounder. Pitch out for ball one. Neither team, despite the fact that they each like to run, neither team had a stolen base in their opening games. Yeah, just a lot of times that's just not the right situation. This certainly a situation where Johnson will look to try and get a jump. You know, kind of the right combination with Peyton at the plate.
Augie Garrido talks in glowing terms about Mark Pate, not just as a as a leader and as a hitter, but then also as a defender. The the move from right to center field. He's not a, a speedster, but takes great angles. Center field, Sturgeon. And that's out number two. Well, right away, you see a lot of off speed pitches here from Anthony Kitson. A little change up up in the zone. Pretty good pitch to hit, actually. And Peyton actually stayed back on the ball as you see him kind of relay to his teammates hey, change up right there. But just a little bit under that ball. So two down man at first, and here is Tres Barrera, the catcher. Freshman's had a very solid year. Augie Garrido was joking about trying to get a chance to sit down with Tres Barrera when he was recruiting him. He said it was hard because his dad was putting him through those those three a day workouts. Here we go. Eagle Pass down there close to the the Mexico border. And have him do that cardio in the late afternoon when it was really hot. Augie Garrido, 75 years old, five times the champion, including twice with the Longhorns. And leading Texas to their 35th College World Series appearance, most of any team. Oh, yep. Come out. Yeah, now time called Gibson out to the mound. Yeah, Kitston probably just telling him, hey, let's focus in now with two outs. Let's really focus on executing our pitches, even though we've got a burner at first base. Yes, be mindful of them. If we want to throw over something, we'll give you the sign for that. But let's not make the pitch suffer, especially with two outs Blank. here against Barrera. Kidston ready. And Kidston is very quick to home plate. Been timing it up here. All these in the one ones, which is very quick to home plate. Anything one, two, or below to home plate is considered quick. 1.2 seconds. Correct. Right. Kidston kind of instituting a bit of a slide step makes it very quick to home. So for Johnson to go, he's got to feel like he's got a really good jump despite his outstanding speed. That's way high. But I think now with two two outs and two strikes, yeah, time you got a wrapper under. I think you got to force the issue no, right now a little bit if you're Johnson. I'll take it. Because if it's an off speed pitch, it's going to be a little more difficult for Kyle Gibson to handle and throw you out. If it's a fastball, because he's not overpowering, you would figure that Barrera would put it in play. So I think now is the time where turn him loose no matter what. There he goes. Swing and a miss. That is the inning. Longhorns leave a man in the top of the first, and Louisville getting some help from the center fielder. Cole Sturgeon, outstanding defensive grab out there in the middle of the diamond. We go to the home half of the first. Texas and Louisville no score. Cardinals coming up to hit. And let's check out our Capital One starting lineups for Louisville. Kyle Gibson at the top of the order, but Cole Sturgeon's been red hot in this NCAA tournament. They have a freshman, Nick Solak, hitting third as their designated hitter. And four of their first five hitters are seniors. So a lot of experience in the top portion of that Louisville order. The Cardinals will go up against Parker French, a right-hander, and a junior from Dripping Springs, Texas. Oh, that Dripping Springs. Making his 16th start. Sinker slider change. He is a classic sinker baller. That two-seam fastball will be a key for him today. He's pitched outstanding so far in the postseason. You see him creeping up on 100 innings 
for the season. And that fastball will, you know, be around 89 to 93 miles an hour. Sliders is best secondary and a very good pickoff move, although he's not overly quick to home plate. So that'll be a nice cat and mouse to watch between French and the Louisville base runner should they get on base. The Louisville. Seem really nervous. Yes, very tense over there in that first base dugout. Gibson to hit. And French pumps it a strike at 92. And you see Gibson right away ask, was that at the bottom of the strike zone? And that's what home plate umpire said, yep, that's the bottom of the zone. Good job by Barrera of holding that two-seam fastball in the zone. That slider missing downstairs, a ball and a strike. So Louisville leading off with their catcher, kind of like the, the Craig Biggio days. You don't see that very much. No, but he's, you see that 323, but a 372 on base percentage, not afraid to get deeper into the count. Oh. And leading off for a little less than a month. And Sutton Whiting was doing it for a good chunk of the year. Here's a 2-1. There's a good look at the sinking fastball. Two-seam fastball that Gibson just kind of swings over the top. It'll dip down in the zone and in on the right-handed hitter. Foul. And that's the idea right there. Be somewhere near your feet. Get swings I'll to get the that. top of the ball. Get those righties to put it on the ground. Who are some of the good sinker ball pitchers that you face in the major league level? Uh, Brandon Webb was unbelievable. Greg Maddox. Up the middle, and that gets through. Base hit for Gibson. Well, good job by Gibson there, spoiling a couple of good sinking fastballs, finally getting the slider out over the plate. He hits it sharply back through the middle, and Louisville now starting this game off as they hope, getting their leadoff batter on with Cole Sturgeon strolling to the plate. Sturgeon, 10th round pick by the Red Sox. And one of the things he both pitches and plays center field, he wants to hit. Yeah, and he, and he was adamant about wanting to hit. In fact, probably would have gone maybe a little higher in the draft had he been a pitcher, but he told everyone, I want to hit. Red Sox obliged. Oh as he shows bunt. But you'll see that from time to time with college kids and teams may like them better as a pitcher, or like them better as a position player and they want to do the other. And good for him sticking to his guns. It's not like he can't ultimately still convert to pitcher if he needs to. Yeah. Or wants to. Yeah, and, and hey, you as a player need to know yourself the best and what's in your heart and to give it a go, you can always turn back and Go the other way and give that a try later on in your career. So French is falling behind 2-0. Oh. Yeah, that'll tell you what the wind is doing here. Yeah, and that's more typical of TD Ameritrade Park blowing in. Yesterday it was actually blowing out a little bit. Is there any part of you that'd be curious to take BP just to see what it plays like? Yeah, not today, because I know it would play extremely short, especially <laughs> when you consider the bats these guys are swinging nowadays. <laughs> not today. The 3-0. And that's in for a strike. <laughs> well, this is now an area where you'll see Louisville force the issue. Gibson not a burner by any means, their catcher at first, but 3-1 now on the count. This is a spot where they'll like to put the game in motion, even with one of their non-base stealers. Caught out of the air, and that'll be a double play. Hit it on the button, but right at the shortstop, two gone. Well, this is a rocket off the bat of Cole Sturgeon, a 3-1 count, the runner holding, but 
kind of inexplicably breaks on that line drive really right at shortstop Hinojosa and Parker French fired up for it knowing he just dodged a bit of a bullet with that rocket off the bat of Cole Sturgeon. With those two guys up the middle Hinojosa and Marlowe doing a good job turning to double plays right there they got that double play out of the air. Yeah, second in the nation a double plays turn. And obviously one of the things that factors in what type of pitcher do you have with a guy like Parker French you're going to get some ground balls. Speaking of which to the right side Marlowe handles and that is the inning. No runs a hit nobody left end to one we're scoreless. Back here in Omaha no score we go to the second sad news today is. We learned of the passing of baseball Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn. Amazing career passed away. Earlier today one of the all time greats one of the best hitters certainly that I've ever seen and definitely in in recent memory a 15 time all star. Eight batting titles went into the Hall of Fame in 2007 and a tie to, to college baseball and college sports in general. He's the head coach at San Diego State the last 12 years but a great baseball and basketball player there. And I think anyone who got to know him all those ring true the Hall of Fame and the tremendous hitter that he was but a really kind and gracious man and everyone he came in contact with realized they were in the presence of a humble really nice person. Now one of the things we were told Augie Garrido actually recruited Tony Quinn at Cal State Fullerton. And because Tony wanted to play basketball too, he ended up at San Diego State. On the ground, Whiting there. And one up and one down. So Augie Garrido not able to get his hands on one of the all time greats. Yeah, and I think sometimes people forget because they know such a great hitter that he was, but what a great athlete Tony Gwynn was. Two sports star at San Diego State. Gold Glover in the outfield a ton of stolen bases the first half of his career. Um, this is a sad day for, for baseball. They could really run a guy who I would say was right at the front of the video age. Yeah. You know he, he was someone I mean you get a 25 man roster he would travel with his own portable VCR and TV and at the time it was thought to be a little odd even a little much now video available everywhere for for players and, and he he you talk to people that played with him he was always a guy that I think partly because of that video stuff just had a great memory and a great feel for how a pitcher was going to attack him in a particular spot in a particular situation and a particular count famous stories about him saying yeah I'm going to get to 2 2 and I'm going to drive a hit over the left field on a slider this guy got me out with two years ago so. Foul tipped into the mitt of Gibson. Yeah, we will miss Tony Gwynn. I worked with him in this capacity at ESPN. As uh, he was a an analyst back in 2005, 2006. Shaw rips that one to right. There's a base hit. So one out. And a man aboard for the Longhorns. Shaw got an off speed pitch there up in the zone. He's had a lot of good swings so far now in the College World Series. Stayed back and rifled it into right field. And the ex football player, also a threat to run over there at first base with 13 stolen bases on the year. Although, as we touched on, Anthony Kitston pretty quick to home plate. Batter now, Madison Carter. The senior designated hitter. Texas able to get past Houston in order to get here. 
And Louisville able to sweep Kennesaw State a couple of games to get to Omaha. Good work there in the dirt by Gibson. We've seen a, for the most part, across the board in the College World Series, outstanding play behind home plate by these catchers, not only receiving and framing pitches, but also in the dirt. And Gibson does a good job, kind of textbook going down and blocking that and deadening it right in front. And Shaw, no chance to advance from first. Sturgeon, a couple of steps in now. I mean, if it's in the air with any type of hang time, you're out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is a straight gust directly in. And I think, you know, as, a, as an outfield in general, you've got to adjust. And I think you really force the issue and, and pinch your guys in, play them very shallow, dare them to hit it over your head, and really take away any cheap hits out in short right, center, and left field. Throw to first and back in is Shaw. You thought one of the differences in the Irvine win over Texas was UC Irvine played their outfielders a little bit more shallow than the Longhorns did. Yeah, and by no means are the outfielders for Louisville right now playing deep. But I think when you consider the field and the way the wind is blowing directly in, I think they could move in even further right now because it's going to be very difficult to hit one over these guys' head. Louisville very aware that the Longhorns might want to run. These teams similar offensively. Most of the teams here kind of fall into this, this category, like to bunt, like to, to run. Certainly these two, UC Irvine, playing that small ball. That's ripped out towards right center field, but hangs up. And Sturgeon there to put it away. John, that was hit extremely hard, and Sturgeon at the end actually had to move in. Just goes to show you how hard that wind is blowing today. You gotta get. Louisville coming up to hit as we go to the bottom of the second. The NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Our headlines for this. NCAA Tournament and College World Series start with this the 2014 NCAA Tournament 42 one run games going to have that when you don't have a ton of offense it's tied for most all time great one between TCU and Texas Tech two lead changes in the eighth inning eventually TCU prevails and another good one last night the walk off Mike Pappy with the winner and Virginia beats Old Miss. And right now, we, we are scoreless. Yep. And Jeff Gardner coming up to hit. Here we go. Gardner, the player of the year in the American Conference. Bye. And he takes a strike. Nationals picking him in the eighth round. Oh, that's just up. Nine homers, a guy but on base percentage just over 400. Struggled a little bit in this tourney. Yeah, sometimes we'll struggle a little bit with off speed pitches as you see back to back change ups there from Parker French, but a really strong power left handed stroke and really handles the fastball well. See the sinking action on that pitch from Parker French. Both fastballs in this at bat. Good sinking action down and away at the Two. bottom of the zone. That's where he needs to live to be at his at his best this afternoon. Now the lefties usually don't mind facing sinker ball pitchers from the right side, correct? 
Correct, but if they can really locate it down the way and prove they can show their secondary for a strike. In the air center field, Peyton chasing, chasing, and makes the grab. Goodness. I mean, that's back-to-back -back balls now. Casey Clemens, we felt like, really drove one to right center. The wind just grabbed it. It died. Sturgeon actually ended up moving in, and there Peyton looked like he was going to be on the dead run all the way and ends up cruising to that catch on a ball hit extremely well off the bat of Jeff Gardner. Force the issue, outfielders. I think you move it in, force them to hit it over your head. There's a strike to Chittenden. I mean, this is one of those days where... I mean, if it's if it's not hit all that far, maybe you should be allowed a second shot. <laughs> French getting ahead 0 and 2. Chittenden, their third baseman, has played some shortstop. And French gets the strikeout. That's his first. Well, just continued to pound the outside part of the plate more, possibly with four seam fastballs there. First pitch might have been just off the plate away. And then he continued to just push it out there. That actually might have had a little bit of cut on it. Yeah, a little cut to that ball, probably just off the plate away. Chittenden unable to put it in play. Three pitches, and he's gone. And here is Corey Ray. The freshman from Chicago pushes a foul. And that ball over there to the left side, something he's become very adept at throughout his freshman year. Start of the season, a pull guy wanted to lift. He's become very adept at working the ball the opposite field. I got him. One of the most improved players on this team, Coach McDonald talking about usually guys don't really settle in and learn to work that ball up the middle the other way until their sophomore year. He's gotten better throughout his freshman season. Ball team. Just missed. Yep. And we've Just seen from straight. French, typically in the low 90s with the sinking fastball, here 94 trying to go in. That's the same way he attacked Chittenden on that side of the plate, more with the four seam up around 94 miles an hour. Ball that's out. Hit the glove, but Barrera was set up off the plate. So now two and two. Press Barrera, the outstanding freshman catcher for the Longhorns. No score here, bottom of the second. Got him to chase, squirts away from Barrera, gathers it in. Oh, man. Close play at first. That throw almost hit Ray. We'll go to the third here in Omaha, Texas, and Louisville. Nothing, nothing. Back here at TD Ameritrade as we go to the third. Nothing, nothing. Texas and Louisville. This is our first elimination game. One of these two squads headed home. Okay, coming up tonight, Vanderbilt and UC Irvine. Tomorrow, the early game, Texas Tech and Ole Miss. The late game, TCU and Virginia. But first things first, one of these teams will survive the day. And the other will pack their bags. Seeing Gerwitz here to hit. That's ripped down the left side, and that is a fair ball into the corner. Gerwitz into second, and a scoring opportunity immediately for Texas. Well, similar to the pitch, Ben Johnson laced the left field back in the first inning. It's a pitch he wants to get down. It stays up. 
stays the inside part of the plate and uh, you see them get the barrel of the bat to the ball and pound this ball down into the corner for an easy stand up double. And now an opportunity for Texas to move a runner to third with less than two outs. Likely see Marlowe drop down a bunt, typically how Texas will play it in this situation. Led the nation in sacrifice bunts. Louisville's White. version of small ball involves stealing bases, second in the nation in that department. Now Marlowe flied to center his first time. Not bunting. I like it. Marlowe's had really good at bats. You've got Kitston on the mound who's not overpowering and as a left-handed hitter, give him the opportunity to pull the ball and not take the bat out of his hand. Obviously a chance to do some damage here. The worst case, maybe you hit a ground ball to the right side and, and move that runner over, but also not just giving up the out completely. Good breaking ball right there. That was a good curveball. You know, it's been more change-ups to this point for Kitson there, breaking out one of his the big, slow overhand curveball. That starts up around the shoulders and breaks down to the bottom of the strike zone. And Brooks Marlowe swings over the top of it. So now he's in an 0-2 hole. Missed off the outside edge. One two. Anthony Kidston, a sophomore from Defiance, Ohio. With the Dodgers, Chad Billingsley from there. I believe the Mets, Jonathan Meese as well. Little roller. Kidston's going to take it himself. And that effectively acts. As a sacrifice bunt, Gerwitz down to third. Well, for the Longhorns, the problem in their first game, couldn't deliver with men in scoring position. Left 12 on base. And with men in scoring position, they were two for 12. Yeah. Good job there by Marlowe. I like Augie Garrido letting him swing, especially from the left side. And look, Kitson did a great job there executing all his pitches, but still Marlowe was able to get the job done by pulling that ground ball Light. and getting that runner to third with less than two. Now this is where Texas has to take advantage. I think they were going some version of a safety. Yeah, a little safety squeeze, meaning a full out sell out squeeze that third the guy on third will run. But there you're kind of getting halfway and reading it off the bat as you see Louisville the infielders probably cutting off that run we call that halfway in the middle so anything hits sharply to them they're coming home if it if it's slower developing they'll go to first. Louisville and Texas in our first elimination game here at the College World Series. Louisville, third trip to the CWS. Left field, Gardner right there. Gerwitz tagging. Here's the throw to the plate. Out of bounds. Save. Longhorns lead it. Close play at home, but Gerwitz just gets in. And Gardner did about all that he could do. Yeah, this is a really good job all around. First, Ben Johnson hits a good pitch. It's a change up away. He's able to get it into the air, and Gardner gets behind this with a lot on. The nice long hop for the catcher. It hits in the grass and pulls him up just enough to allow Gerwitz to slide in under the tag. Good job of hitting by Johnson. Good throw and execution by Louisville. But the Longhorns strike first here in the elimination game. And there's an off speed pitch to Peyton. Ball that's up. Curveball missed. 
And the count one and one. Peyton who fly to center his first time. That 0 for 4 on Saturday ended that incredible stretch. 101 straight games getting on base and maybe started a new streak. Yeah, he looked very comfortable in his first at bat to me. Just got under a pitch and hit it to center field. Felt like recognizing pitches real well, and there he jumps on a high fastball. A good short swing, pounds it into right field for a two out hit. The Texas already with a run on four hits, two down and a man aboard. Tress Barrera, the catcher. What have you seen from Kidston so far? Well, I've seen a guy who definitely is going to, when the chips are down, going to rely on his secondary pitch, especially the changeup, which is a really good pitch for him. He's thrown some good breaking balls. Occasionally mixing in that fastball, just around 86, 87 miles an hour, but a good job, too, of being quick to home plate. There's that change up again at 75 miles an hour. He's been around 73, 75 with that change up. You can tell it's a pitch he has real good feel for. And a pitch when I think the chips are down, that's the pitch he feels the most confident in throwing. Nothing in two now. With Peyton at first. Peyton, by the way, a threat to go. 19 steals caught once. We've seen twice now with Johnson and Peyton on and two outs, the best base stealers, but because Kitson's really quick to home plate, for the they really haven't run. Johnson finally did about six pitches into an at bat on a 2 2 2 out count. Kids are really slowing things down here. And that's another way you can affect the base runner. One way is to be very quick to home plate, another way is varying your throw overs to first base, but then varying the time from when you come set to you release the ball so the base runner can't get a read. And that's the one thing we've okay. seen now, though. Louisville has pitched out three times. I think Kitston's so quick to home plate. I don't think the... And it seems like he almost quickens up when he does the pitch out. So if that's the case, the base runner slash base stealer will tend to shut it down if you get real quick to home plate. So it makes the pitch out not a big deal. Check swing and a ball in the dirt. Yes, he did. Travis Katzenmeyer. So Barrera is gone, and that's the inning. But the Longhorns produced the first run of the game. Zane Gerwitz starting things off with a double. And eventually comes around at a sacrifice fly by Ben Johnson. It's 1-0 Texas. Home half of the third as Louisville will come up to hit Texas leading it one to nothing. And the bottom third of the order K Whiting and Lucas Grant K robbed on Saturday Brian Reynolds Booney, look at this catch. Yeah one of the real great plays so far of the College World Series and that was on day one of the College World Series when the wind was blowing in similar to the way it is this afternoon. Perhaps if he would have hit that yesterday where the wind was actually blowing out to left field a little bit, we might have had our first and only home run of this 2014 College World Series. Yeah, Dan McDonald, the head coach in Louisville, came last night as a fan and said, oh, man, it's blowing out. We could probably juice some balls tonight. Hot. From the box. Grant K, a, a local guy, when everybody was take a batting practice on Friday he was like a rock star at the cameras following him around 
grew up fairly close to Rosenblatt Stadium. I guess he described it as a bike ride away from Rosenblatt. Went to just about every college World Series from the time he was four or five. On a bounce, nice play, Gerwitz. One down. Well, Parker French is really throwing the fastball where he wants to. After locating a couple well in the outside corner, he's able to get this ball in on Grant K. And you're right, this is an outstanding play. You see it a little bit in on the handle there, but a hot shot nonetheless. And this is a really nice play by Gerwitz. You see him go down low, easier to go from down low to up. It helps create a better hop for him. And once he catches it, becomes ap academic and easy throw to first. But not an easy play down there at third. Made look easy by Gerwich. Rock of the sunglasses. Holla. <laughs> would you style like that? Did you rock the sunglasses when you played? No, every spring training, I would try and wear sunglasses in the field. And then like the second inning of the first spring game, I'd throw them out and go, I just, <laughs> I wore those. The flip ups up the middle. Nice play, Hinojosa. Oh, brilliant defense here in the third by Texas. Boog, a great play here by Hinojosa with his flip down sunglasses on. Kind of shaded up the middle. The ball's hit extremely well off the bat of Whiting, but the range, the 360 turn and the strong throw to first. Abra will get Whiting easily, who runs well down the line. But two nice defensive plays by Texas to start the inning. And important because both guys are base stealers and guys that will look to run for Louisville. Pass the diving Hinojosa into left. Lucas with a hit. A two out base runner for Louisville. So two down, man aboard, back to the top of the order. Texas losing to UC Irvine on Saturday. Meanwhile, Louisville falling to Vanderbilt 5-3 on Saturday. Louisville was the only unbeaten left in the tourney. And not anymore. See that two seamer going down and in over top of the bat. Yeah, and you see Kyle Gibson turn around to home plate umpire Mark Yule and say, where was that pitch? And he said, yeah, it was in. Price started in on, on the inside corner, but the sinking movement action Ball, moves it in. in off the plate. Here he does a good job of laying off of it. One, one. He said over top the bat, meaning under the bat. Yeah, that. The bat over top of the ball. You know what I mean. Lucas at first seven out of eight in the stolen base department. Oh. French is not a guy who uses the slide step very much. No, very different from Kitston, as you can see, picking that leg up quite a bit higher. And as a result, he's a tenth or two slower to home plate. So Louisville's, while he's not very, not, while he's not slow to home plate, the base dealers will look to run against French. He's about, I've been timing him periodically here, averaging about 1-3 to home plate, which is about average. But if you're a decent base dealer and you hear 1-3, you're yeah. going to give it a shot usually. Yeah, absolutely. As long as you get a decent jump. There he goes. Ball four, Pitch inside, inside and ball four. So. Two on with two outs, a threat for Louisville. Yeah, you got the multiple ways to limit the running game. You can be quick to the plate. You can have a real good move. You can vary the hold times. And then you can also go with the Greg Maddox method, which is 
I don't really care my way of limiting the running game is you're not going to get on base. Correct. And the catcher makes a difference too. There is that. <laughs> Well, now a good scoring opportunity for Louisville. Cole Sturgeon, who hit a rocket, lining I'm into out. a double play his first time. But first time gotcha. today, we've seen a lot of good swings this inning off the bat of Louisville. It's been the fine defense of Texas, though, that has them here with two outs, a chance to get out of it. And now Skip Johnson out to the mound. It's an interesting spot right here. We saw... Parker French retire seven straight getting strikeouts getting ground balls and really carving up the Louisville lineup and then Lucas doubles and now the walk and Louisville in a good spot to score but it seemed as though he'd really found his rhythm. At 40 pitches which is just fine here in the third. We'll see if he can get back on track as he faces Cole Sturgeon. Texas up one zip. Oh. Only run of the game a Ben Johnson sack fly in the top of the third. Hear that wind blowing and kind of dust blowing up all over Sturgeon stepping out, getting some dust out of his eyes. Big bounce and right there, Gerwitz will go the easy way. Louisville leaves a couple. We go to the fourth. <laughs> Texas leading it one to nothing. And we'll be joining the booth coming up by the all-time great Roger Clemens. Back here in Omaha as we go to the four Texas leading it one to nothing. John Chambi and Aaron Boone and who was that baby faced <laughs> pitcher. Yeah there's Casey there as we're joined here in the booth by Roger Clements. How you doing? Doing good guys. Thank you. What's it you like to, to see that that highlight back then 83. Well, that was a lot of hanging sliders ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun though. Rosenblatt uh, and Omaha bring back great memories. That one ripped into left. Hinojosa has been a hot hitter. Gardner over to pick it up, and Hinojosa will stay put at first. So I got to ask you, what's it like coming back to Omaha and now watching your son compete in, in, in this College World Series? It's a lot of fun. I mean, uh, you know, I know Texas has been here a lot, 35 times, I think they said earlier. But, uh, you know, our guys are underdogs. We're a young team, and... Uh, to watch them fight and scratch to get to have the opportunity to get the regionals super regionals and get here was uh, just a dream come true. You know I give Casey tidbits here or there but uh, Augie does a great job with those kids you know give them inspiration and, and uh, how to play the game. I've kind of bought into the game too Boney about uh, you know right here you probably got to get him over even though it's one of our hottest hitters at the plate. Is it. Is it nerve wracking for you watching Casey? It's not. You know, um, one of my former teammates, Calvin Chiraldi, Lucas is on yeah. the team, and I know Calvin gets antsy when Lucas is pitching, uh -huh. and I try and hang with him to, to keep him calm, but uh, it doesn't work. Uh, Casey <laughs> may pitch a little bit next year, and I think if he pitches, I would be a little more uh, uneasy, um, you know, when he was on the mound because I know how difficult it is. Watching him hit and play first, uh, you know, that doesn't bother me a lot. What are your memories in terms of coming to Omaha and just the, the College World Series in general? I just remember um, uh, 82 be getting so close. I think we lost to Miami, tied for third, something like that. Lost to Miami and uh, 
went home. Our best player uh, was Spike Owen, and Spike was uh, going to be drafted, or he was drafted by Seattle. And uh, losing him, he was our team leader, and uh, I just thought that that was going to be it for us. And thank goodness uh, we had a very, very talented pitching staff, and we were able to work our way back and win it against Alabama. Well, I got a little Roger Clemens story here. So I get <laughs> traded over to the Yankees in 2003. Didn't know Roger going to the American League all of a sudden. And I got to say, one of the joys of my career was playing behind Roger Clemens because he was so focused. He would talk to his infielders. He would yell out at me, hey, Booney, heads up right here. You know, you always on your toes, always positive with you. And the reason I bring that up is because in talking to the Texas coaches, all the good things we hear about Casey and the kind of teammate he is, the kind of person he is, and kind of the, it kind of sets the tone really for this Texas Longhorn team and the, the makeup as a whole of their team. Well, I agree with you in great memory, Booney. I mean, same way with you. I mean, off the field, uh, one way. And then uh, once we're on the field, very, very competitive. And that's, you know, that's the way my game is. And, but Booney's right. There would be times I knew what pitch I was going to throw, and I'd look over him and just give him a little look or a, a quick holler, and uh, he, he was in great position. Same thing with Jeet, uh, a lot of my infielders. It was, it was fun staying in communication with them, especially I had some great backstops back there, some great catchers throughout my 24 years. And they paid attention to detail also, so, you know, we loved it. Texas leading here one nothing John Chambi Aaron Boone joined by the great Roger Clemens here in the booth and as far as Casey's getting a chance to, to play first base he has pitched he's bothered by a, a shoulder impingement what do you see his his future as well I see his, his shoulders great right now I think he will throw a little bit this summer and then be ready to throw some next year but uh, you know he loves it down there I mean have an opportunity to start and uh, Augie went young with some freshmen. Fly ball left, Gardner coming Look up. Look at the wind knock that down. Wow. Unbelievable. Well, it's another great example of why I think on a day like today, as the outfielders, you really got to move them in and dare them to hit over your head because it's going to be hits like that that could make the difference in the ball game. That ball clearly probably would have hung up on a normal day. Gardner can't get to it. Yeah, the wind really knocking that down. We talked about the importance of playing the outfielders shallow. Nothing Gardner could really do in that spot. So two on for Texas, and there's no one out. And here comes Madison Carter, their senior designated hitter. Well, now, definitely a bunning situation here for Carter as he'll look to move two runners up into scoring position now with less than two outs. Pulls the bat back. And look who's on deck. It is. I mean, and, and the Louisville pitchers uh, been featuring early in this game a, a very, very good changeup. Been staying down with it for the most part and was able to get a few curveballs over of, as of late. Yeah, he has. We, we heard a lot about his changeup. Obviously, not an overpowering guy, but he has thrown a good couple of good curveballs for strikes, but. He's in a tough spot here. We'll see if he does 2-0 challenge him with a fastball. Not his best right. pitch. See what he goes with in this spot. Kidston. And that one butted nicely to third. Chittenden gets the out. And two runners advance. Roger in a spot like this. We talk so much about the hitters. Mm -hmm. If you're pitching with the wind blowing in, does that affect the way you're going to attack a hitter? It does. I, you know, again, I, even the opportunity that, that uh, Augie had me talk to the staff, you have to pay attention to detail when you're warming up in the bullpen and what the wind's doing. It may carry your breaking ball a little bit further than you would like. Uh, somebody like myself with my split finger, it would really affect uh, where my release point is with the split because it's going to carry another foot or two towards home plate. So we'll see what happens. Casey hitting here is going to be interesting because you you want to you want to pull the bar or get it in the air but the ball's not traveling that one clips the corner to Casey Clemens the first baseman yeah and with two runners out there in scoring position they're going to concede the run in the middle of the diamond and Texas already leading one to nothing
count even up. As he went outside and then back in. Good pitch selection. I guarantee you, Casey is not looking in. He's looking to cover. Well, Casey's been very good all season long at that pitch selection. Despite the low average, he has walked a ton, and as a result, that on base percentage is way up there. He's got two in scoring position. Texas already leading. Looked like a backdoor breaking ball, wasn't it? Yep, and that's one thing he's been able to do today when he's really needed a secondary pitch to get in there. Ooh, a okay. curveball, maybe a little friendly strike there on the corner. Clements back in as Kinston is ready, and here we go. There you Up go. the middle. Good job right there. Get down the line. That a boy. And a run in, making it two to nothing on the error by Sutton Whiting. Well, with two strikes there, a really good job by Casey Clemens of shortening up, understanding that the middle of the field was conceding the run, just wanted to put it in play. And Sutton Whiting, an outstanding shortstop, kind of got himself a little in between hop. And Casey showed he can run a little bit better than his dad as he's hustling <laughs> down that line. I knew I couldn't come up with that. You getting a shot off on me. <laughs> Oh boy. He does do that. On safety in football and his arm span, he's got me about, <laughs> about an inch. That's why Augie's got him at first base. He's Spider Man over there. So uh, now two to nothing. Yeah, we're going to have a visit to the mound. Hey, some sad news today the Hall of Famer, gosh. Tony Gwynn, passing. It, when you heard it, what went through your mind? Heard it this morning when I got up and uh, it was. It was shocking. I knew all the uh, the battles he were he was going through with his throat cancer and uh, and battling that, but uh, just shocked because uh, you know he's another one for me that uh, when I played against him and we met under the stadium or away from the field, he was all smiles. I mean, he's for me he's a guy out of the Kirby Puckett mold. You know, um, Tony was fantastic, great. Um, uh, Casey has a great story uh, about him in the All-Star game in San Diego. We were underneath the stadium uh, after we I had worked my innings and he was pulled out of the game. We met underneath in the tunnel. He had a game bat that he used. And he looked at Casey. Casey was just looking up staring at him. He goes, here you go, kid. It was like one of those Coca-Cola moments. And Casey got the bat and he could barely lift it. Casey was six, seven years old. And he gave it back to Mr. Gwynn said, I, it's too big for me, Mr. Gwynn. I, I can't use this. <laughs> Well, that's funny because most of the times he would give a bat away. Most people didn't think it was too big. Famously using a small bat that he could control, but a wizard with that thing in his hand. Just sad to hear, boys. Yes. I tell you, Casey's brothers jumped on him right away. Though said, "No, Casey, you're going to want this bat." <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, look here. They go squeeze, but not able to get it down fair. Probably had about four grains in that bat too. It was. It was. A, it was. A, it was fun. You know, they used to tell me it was like uh, Wade Boggs uh, in All Star games how to get Tony out. There's no scouting report. Really, just throw a two seamer down the middle and make him decide what he wanted to do with it. Well, I was said him and then Ichiro later were the two guys I felt like looked at where I was playing at third base and that kind of was factoring into their game plan. Pitch. I feel like everybody that encountered him as well he treated everybody with kindness there was kind of a gentleness to him and yet a guy that was obviously really competitive and fired exactly he knew what he was doing at the plate let me tell you John Chambi Aaron Boone yeah, joined you. by Roger Clemens up here in the booth reset Casey Clemens Longhorns leading it two to nothing. Play. Casey knocking in the last run. An elimination game, first elimination game in this CWS. Well, you can see these Texas hitters really battling today. In game one, they struggled in these situations when they had opportunities. But Johnson earlier with a man on third and less two outs gets the sack fly. Clemens with two strikes able to put the ball in play in the middle of the field. And now Gerwitz here with a chance to really add to what's been an outstanding day for him on both sides of the ball.
Kidston ready and fires. Pitch. There's that changeup. It looked like again. Well, you know that's the pitch when Kidston gets in a jam. Or the pitch he wants to go to is that straight changeup. The fastball is more if he can get ahead and locate it, and then maybe try and fool you with it. But mm. it's a very good shade straight change where you see the bottom just kind of fall out of that. Starts in the bottom of the zone, ends up almost in the dirt, and Gerwitz out in front of it. Same action as a split finger yep. right there. When did you start throwing that pitch? Later in my career, early in my career, I learned it from Mike Scott. You know, being from Houston, Scotty pitched obviously for the Astros and uh, Roger Craig. Right side, Lucas collects, and that's the inning. But Texas adds a run. Roger Clemens, thanks for joining thanks, us. Man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Rocky. The Rocky, see you, man. man. Always. Yeah. Enjoy the World Series. Thank you, babe. Texas on top. It's two zip. Back here at TD Ameritrade as we go to the home half of the fourth. And Texas leading Louisville two to nothing. Our first elimination game. One of these two squads going home. Booney, what about Parker French today? Well, we talked about his fastball, and he's had a good sinking fastball, throwing pretty hard too today in the low and mid 90s. There, a little bit of a cut action on it. There, you see the sinker, the bottom kind of fall out of that, able to jam a hitter there. And there, the great play turned in by Hinojosa. But the few mistakes he has made with the fastball, it seems like his defense behind him has been there to pick him up. They've made some outstanding plays. As we sit here in the home half of the fourth, he's got a 2 0 lead. 42 pitches, Aaron. That's pretty efficient. Yeah, and. And that just goes to him just trying to pound the zone, use his defense. That one a mile high. Barrera will give way to Gerwitz. Probably a good idea. Yeah, on a day like today, that's a difficult play for a catcher to make with that wind blowing all over the place. Backspin on that ball. If your infielders can come in and make that play, they take priority. Yeah, that's one of those with the wind and just in that spot straight over your head. You feel like Dorothy from the Wizard of Oz. All of a sudden everything starts spinning and that ball's hard to hard to locate and just a lot easier for one of the one of the infielders to come get it. One down and it's Jeff Gardner flied to center. Oh. Gardner hit that ball extremely well his first at bat Wynn just held it up and allowed Peyton to run it down in center field. Yeah it was absolutely black it's really difficult to truly figure out each time it seems as though a player really squares one up if in fact it's happened you have a pretty good idea. Yeah. But I think Gardner got that one pretty well. Goes too far that time. One, two. And it just makes it different. You know, we've we've talked about it both on and off the air. So far, no home runs hit in this College World Series. Only three were hit last year. A strikeout for French two away. Yeah, and, and on a day like today, it would seem like it would remain that way. Maybe a real strong power hitter if he really got into one where he pulled it. But let's take a look at how they attack. And Parker French continuing to pound that fastball, that two seam fastball there. You see the bottom fall out of it at 91. Gardner not really seeing it well. And then with two strikes, climbs the ladder, elevates the fastball. And blows it past Gardner for the first out of this inning. Second out, excuse me. Good breaking ball there against Alex Chittenden. Struck out swinging his first time. To third and Gerwitz. Parker French looking sharp. Gets him one, two, three. When we come back, Jamie Sire will talk with the head coach, Dan McDonald, of the Louisville Cardinals. That's next. 
back here on a very windy day here in Omaha Louisville trailing to nothing and coach uh, you guys have played a lot in this win. Is it affecting your play or, or how you're adjusting today? No, I thought offensively we've been pretty good up until last inning. That, that was a disappointing inning because he had thrown probably 10 to 12 balls in a row and we just didn't have a real good approach. Uh, you know, defensively we're playing fine. Anthony's competing on the mound. We just, you know, just got to play the game. Tough weather conditions, but it's windy in Louisville as well sometimes. And your assessment so far of Parker French and what you need to do to get, get you know, to he's effective with the fastball. And uh, we got to lay off the fastball when it's out of the zone. Obviously, when it's in the zone, we got to stay short to it and compete. We can't let the wind. I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna score three runs off of one double in the gap. So we got to get back to having quality at bats. Just one at bat at a time. Put some runners on base because I think I think he's a different pitcher out of the stretch. Thanks, coach. <laughs> That's a good point. You know, the, you see guys get into spots where they start to get comfortable, and some guys, there's a big difference with the way they feel wind up and stretch. Yeah, and I think the speed of Louisville, if they can get some of their speed guys on, they'll have a chance to run against Play. Parker French. But a couple of fine defensive plays against some of their base dealers have kept them off base. Ball, no swing. In the box for me. Anthony kids it at 64 pitches. Ben Johnson knocked in the Longhorns first run. This guy's an impressive athlete. Just a sophomore plays left field put together. That first single was an absolute bullet to left field. Now for more coverage of the College World Series, including interactive brackets and highlights, go to NCAA.com. And here at the 2014 College World Series, Texas leading two to nothing from TD Ameritrade Park in Omaha. Our first elimination game. One of these two teams is headed home. Softly hit on the ground. Whiting. Good stretch at first by K, one down. Good look at the speed of Johnson there as that ball was hit off the fist. Sutton Whiting, knowing who's running, does a good job of charging this ball, knowing he has to get rid of it quickly with something on it, and he does. And right on cue, Sutton Whiting chatting it up out there as the leader of the defense, a very vocal player for this Louisville Cardinal team, especially on defense. Let's go down to Jamie. Yeah, guys, Coach McDonald says, um, in his words, he will not shut up. But it's like having a coach on the field, he says. And Sutton agreed. I told, I talked to him before the game. Oh, he told me up. he's always been just a high-energy guy. And in baseball, that's really key. And he likes to try and make everyone around him better and just make sure everybody's on the same page, knows the situation. But he says it's not all serious baseball talk. He says every once in a while, he'll crack jokes or give some fake signs just to keep oh. everybody loose and on their toes. It's kind of like me, you, and Booney, Jamie. He will not stop talking. <laughs> I'm sitting right here. <laughs> what were you like as a player? Did you talk a lot? Yeah. Well, I don't know about a lot, but I, yeah, I, I spoke. I spoke to the third base coach, and, and players came by. Or I'd say I was a little on the vocal side. Not Sutton Whiting vocal, but. Who's the most vocal guy you played with? Whew. Tell you what, as a pitcher, honestly, Roger Clemens, I, he was very vocal, very in tune with the infielders and moving you around and kind of trying to get you pumped up. And, and he would really get excited when you make a good play behind him. He was very much like that. Now, Mark Payton aboard for the second time. Guy who came in with a 460 on base percentage. And that's heading up. One down man at first for Barrera. Trust Barrera. Throw gets away from K, but not quite far enough for Peyton to advance. The righty and a lefty, Sparger and Harrington. Yeah. 
Lucas can't make the play and it gets all the way through. He had a decision to make. Looked like a chance for two and it ends up being none. Yeah, that little bit of indecision made it an in-between hop. Watch him. He's got to commit one way or the other, and he kind of goes at it. He doesn't really sell out to go get through the hop, and there it turns into an in-between hop, which essentially is a do-or-die play for an infielder. It'll go as an error, but you've got to decide as an infielder, and there in a double play situation where you want to get the lead runner, you've got to commit and go hard at it right away, and that might have been his best chance to get to a short hop and make it an easier play for him. Batter now, C.J. Hinojosa. Who's now 12 for 27 in the NCAA tournament? He's been their best hitter in this postseason. Texas trying to add to a 2 0 lead. Back to the mound. Goes to second for one on the first. Gets away from K. Here comes the runner, Peyton, in to score 3 0. Well, it's a really good job by Kitson here of getting the ball. We talked about him being a good athlete. He kind of turns the wrong way, but does a good job of setting his feet and making a good throw to second base. Lucas turns the ball over quickly, and Grant K just kind of misses. You see Hinojosa busting it all the way, and Hinojosa just simply clanks the ball over there at first base. A pretty good turn by Lucas, but that allows another insurance run here for Texas in the middle innings. They'll go fielder's choice at E4. That allows the run to score. So second error of the inning on Louisville. You know, we've talked so much in this College World Series about these teams being so strong pitching and defense wise pretty much across the board. And today, perhaps the difference in these two teams, Texas has made some outstanding defensive plays and a couple defensive gaffes here by Louisville has cost them another run to extend that lead for the Longhorns. Sturgeon there to pull it down. Texas, though, tacks on another. And coming up, we'll be joined by the Longhorns head coach, Augie Garrido. Texas with a 3 and nothing lead here in Omaha as we head to the bottom of the fifth. And, Coach, the other day, you guys struggled with runners in scoring position, left 12 men on base. What's been the difference today in those situations? Well, we've, quite honestly, we've uh, put some balls in play, and, and we've had a few lucky breaks as well. It takes a little luck in baseball, doesn't it? It certainly does. What about your pitcher, Parker French, and the job he's done on the mound? He's, d he's done a good job so far, and, and this is the way he's been pitching in this part of the season. Thanks so much. Thank you. So Augie Garrido trying to keep his team here in Omaha. Aaron Boone, what about Parker French? Yeah, he's, as Augie said, he's been pitching much better in the postseason and today really leaning on his fastball. He's mixed in a few sliders, but for the most part, it's been a load to mid 90s fastball, both two seam and more four seam. And Louisville's had some good swings on him, but the defense behind him has been stellar. And to this point, shutting out the Louisville Cardinals. There's Corey Ray now, struck out swinging his first time. This Louisville team's got a little bit of a Illinois-Chicago flavor, a number of players from there. And of course, 
the Longhorns top player out there in center field Mark Payton from the south side of Chicago so we're in Omaha we got Texas against Louisville and it's got a little windy city flavor to it on the backhand there long throw Clemens good stretch Hinojosa just gets Ray at first well I thought the way Ray runs and the as deep as this was to Hinojosa, I didn't think he was going to have a chance, but he gets a lot on this throw. It's kind of an in-between hop, a tough play just to catch it. And did Ray beat it? Yeah. He did. Looks like he was safe, and Ray was pretty upset knowing he was safe down there. But that's a call they missed, and a big first out here for Texas. But a good play by Hinojosa, who got a lot on that throw. Dan McDonald out there talking with Travis Katzenmeyer. McDonald's team down 3 0. And he was emotional between innings, talking to his team. And you could see him saying, don't give it bats away. Let's take quality at bats. We're not out of this game. It's all about quality at bats. You see him saying there. And you could sense. In the air left field, getting knocked down by the wind, but Johnson there to haul it in. You could sense in his interview with Jamie, the last inning, he was a little bit frustrated with their at-bats. They went up there early swings, didn't... The competition of the at-bats, I think, in his eyes weren't good, whereas leading up to that point, for the most part, they had been good. Some good defensive plays by Texas. Another one to start this inning, although Louisville doesn't get the break on a play where Ray was safe at first base. Anthony. Nothing. Our first elimination game. One of these teams is headed home. And we'll be down to seven in Omaha. Sutton White in ground to short his first time. Ball that's up. They need base runners, and Whiting is outstanding at doing just that. The other way, and there you go, base hit. And now despite this 3-0 game, Parker French, as we've talked about, just kind of average move to home plate, not real quick, and Sutton Whiting with 37 stolen bases on the season. I think with two outs here, we'll look to run early in this count. One of the things Dan McDonald said is that early in the year, he's having a little bit of trouble because he was always going on the first pitch as opposed to maybe feeling out the pitcher for an offering or two. Doesn't go here. Ripped foul. That goes sizzling out of play. As a team, they were second in the nation in steals, and they steal it at an 80% clip. So, steal it a lot, steal it efficiently. Popped up, Herrera near the screen. And he wasn't able to make the grab spilled out of his glove. Tough play. Well, we saw Gerwitz come in and be able to make the play last inning. We talked about that being a much easier play for the infielder, especially on a day like today where the wind's really blowing, kind of drifts on him. And with that catcher's mitt, it's a little tougher to catch the pop-up. Gerwitz does a good job of getting there and being in position to possibly help, but way back by the screen, probably the only chance for the catcher as it clanks off the webbing of his glove. Were you good on balls in the air? No. Didn't like it? Did not. It's interesting. You talk to big league infielders, and they will tell you straight up, some guys really like catching balls in the air, and there are other what? guys that say, like you just did, I don't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. That one in the air down the right side. Way. My good buddy Dimitri Young, who I played with for a long time, it wasn't exactly a defensive wizard, but I used to say, What do you hear when the ball goes up, a high pop up to you, Dimitri? And he said, Circus music. And I thought, 
That about sums it up. Sometimes on a cold, windy night where the wind's blowing, I would hear that, 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 that. <laughs> Please catch it. Oh. I thought you were going to say, I hear you got it. <laughs> oh, I like that. I liked hearing I got what? it from my shortstop. Oh. Yeah, it's fine. You know, the, the Yankee shortstop, One Derek Jeter, so great on pop ups and balls in the air, and yet, conversely, Alex Rodriguez, who was a superior elite defensive shortstop in his prime, wasn't real good on pop-ups, no. balls in the air. Larry Boa, another outstanding shortstop, never really liked catching pop-ups. Runner goes, ripped left field. Johnson back, back some more, pulls it in. That was crushed. Louisville still trailing at three nothing an opportunity right there more good work by Parker French Zach Lucas puts a charge in it but the speed of Johnson and the wind holding it up back here in Omaha as we go to the sixth and Texas leading in this elimination game it's three to nothing. And ESPN's coverage of the FIFA World Cup continues on Tuesday. It's a triple header on ESPN. 11.30 a.m. It's Belgium and Algeria. And then a good one, Brazil and Mexico at 2.30. 5.30, Russia faces South Korea to the 2014 World Cup presented by Adidas. Tuesday on ESPN. Of course, Team USA going at it later today. 5.30 Eastern, they'll go up against Ghana. All right, man. Here we go. You're on TV. <laughs> Shake it loose. Let's go. Madison Carter now. 0 for 1. Put down a sack bunt his last time up. Jamie Sire in the opening part of our broadcast talked about the Texas seniors and what Peyton and Thornhill coming back have meant to this team come on, come on. towards first K and Kidston well we talked about Anthony Kidston a very good change up and the need to keep the ball down because he's not overpowering and where he's been hurt today has been up in the strike zone couple of fastballs at the top of the zone they've taken advantage of and hit very hard and the changeup while it's been a very good pitch for him he has left a few up that have gotten him into a bit of trouble today but on a balance a pretty good effort so far by Kitston at an even 80 pitches drops in a good curve to Casey Clemens knocked in a run his last time. What was your sense talking to, to Roger in terms of his son's future on the mound or at first? Yeah, it was tough, tough to say. I think he enjoys watching him play first. I was expecting to say, you know, it is nerve wracking watching your son play. But Same. He really, I think, enjoys it. And I think next year when I think we'll see him on the mound a lot more, that's when you might see the rocket sweat it out a little bit. I feel like guys who played without fail they say watching my son is as nerve-wracking as it gets is Casey kind of getting loose out there as a just warm it up pregame yeah and, and he's at a point now where he could he's up to a few innings if Texas needed him to pitch well but will probably become a part of the pitching staff a lot next year. It's a little bit of a, a generalization, but I feel like unless there's a really huge difference, most of the guys want to swing the bat. Yeah. Like a chance to be involved every day. Absolutely. Left side, Chittenden at foul ground. 
And Kidston gets him one, two, three for the first time today. So we go to the bottom of the six. Texas leading three nothing. We got our plate umpire Mark Yule mic'd up on the day. Foot in the box for me. Hang on, time out. You got a wrapper underneath your foot. Nope, left foot. I'll take it. Foul. Should be somewhere near your feet. I'll take that one. Good stuff right there. Yeah. Mark Ewell, our plate umpire. Come on, Kyle, we're good. Louisville comes up to hit. And top of the order. And catcher Kyle Gibson climbs in. Here we go. Hey. Slider spinning on the inside corner. Got the plate. Yeah, earlier Gibson questioned a call on a ball on the inside corner, but it was the sinking fastball. There it was the slider. He started off the plate and broke it back to the corner. He's mixed in just enough secondary pitches to keep Louisville off balance, but for the most part, it has been about the fastball and the sinking fastball. Now, as a right handed hitter facing a right handed pitcher, okay. if you had your choice. I know this is a little generic, but facing a, a sinker ball guy, a two seamer, or a, a guy that threw a little harder, a four seam guy, which would you prefer? My preference was the four seam harder thrower because I like the ball up. Back to the mound in French. And there's one away. More baseball coming your way tonight. David Wright and the Mets taking on Yadier Molina and the Cardinals. Monday Night Baseball presented by USAA Mets Cardinals at 8 on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. A lot of Cards fans this part of the country. Cards fans, obviously, the Omaha Royals. All oh, that's out. So uh, a number of Kansas City fans as well. Yep. For the longest time the affiliation with Kansas Hi. City. But this part of the country you'll find Cubs fans, Cardinal fans, Royals fans. Yeah. Royals getting hot too. They've won about seven in a row now. I know you and Rick Sutcliffe on that bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Two one. Two and one to Sturgeon as French steals. Cole Sturgeon, Dan McDonald described him as a football type personality, really intense. Twos. Little roller, Barrera, nice play. Two up, two down. Louisville today, five and two thirds innings. They've been shut out, held to three hits as Parker French has been in control. And there's that string that he's run up. French a guy coming in hadn't allowed a homer the entire year in 95 and a third. It ain't happening today I don't think. <laughs> no sinker baller in this ballpark with the wind howling straight in. I think that that is a safe bet. That's our first elimination game of the CWS. And one of these two headed home. Texas 35th appearance in the College World Series. Louisville 
third appearance, all of them under Dan McDonald. They're getting the one, they had that one about the ball further. I got gotcha. you. Ball four. Barrera in the plate umpire, Mark Yule having a, a running dialogue. Solak takes the walk, and with two outs, a man aboard in front of Jeff Gardner. Well, this is one of the guys, if we're going to see a homer today, that would hit it. He's got nine on the season and absolutely tattooed one to center field in the second that Mark Payton pretty much put in his back pocket after a little bit of running and then slowed down as it just kind of hung up there like it was on a string or something. Yeah, still several feet from even getting it to the warning track. Yeah. Gardner, an eighth round pick by the Nationals. So lack eight steals caught four times. We saw Nathan Thornhill for Texas in the opener against UC Irvine. He did a solid job. Stuff wise French is pretty good. Runner goes, pitches low, throw to second, safe at second. Solak with the steal, so the freshman into scoring position. Yeah, despite the three nothing lead for Texas here in the sixth, this is not going to stifle the aggressiveness of Louisville. He gets a really good jump. We've talked about French not being overly quick to home plate, but Louisville's going to continue to play their game if they get opportunities. A real good break and clearly under the tag there at second base and a scoring opportunity now for Louisville here with two outs in the sixth. Clemens handles the chance, races to first, and the inning is over. On to the seventh, Texas leading three zip top three in the order, including Mark Payton coming up to hit. Welcome back to the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. And back here in Omaha to the seventh, three nothing Texas. John Shambi and Aaron Boone. We send it downstairs to Jamie Sire. Yeah, John, top of the order up for Texas, including Mark Payton, and there's a very special reason that he wears the number two. He did not always wear that number. It actually belonged to his summer ball teammate, Stephen Bajenski, who unfortunately died during heart surgery due to complications during that surgery, and they actually attended rival high schools, and the day that Mount Carmel, that's Stevens High School, retired his number two jersey, they were playing Mark's High School, which is St. Rita, and Mark homered twice in that game and Steve's dad Mark and his sister Paige here in Omaha his dad told me it means so much to him to see Mark wearing the number two because in baseball your number is so much a part of your identity and this really helps keep Stevie's legacy alive yeah guys there were rivals and teammates and Aaron Boone you have a, a connection to the Bajenski family and Steven <clears throat> yeah I had a very similar procedure done in 2009 and was contacted by the family when their son was getting ready to go through it and um, sadly it didn't turn out very well and uh, you know having a little bit of contact over the phone with the family became an emotional time for me as well and um, I'm just happy to see them here enjoying the game that he and their son loved. Yeah, it's pretty powerful stuff. The connection between Put in the, box for me. the Peyton, specifically Mark and the Bajenskis. Yes, he did. One, two. Mark Peyton eventually move on to professional baseball. He's a seventh round pick with the Yankees and. The only thing we know is that. When he gets to the big leagues with him, he's not going to be able to wear the number two. Right. 
but I think that that's a <laughs> something that he'll he'll deal with when he gets there. But a, a really nice way to honor the memory of his friend. Right now, Peyton's Texas Longhorns leading three to nothing. Trying to survive an elimination game. Louisville on the ropes. He's out. And Johnson is gone. Well, it was a good look at that straight changeup. That's been a nice pitch for Kitson all afternoon. When he's got it down in the zone, the bottom's kind of falling out of it. And there he gets Johnson to swing over the top for the second out of this inning. And here is Mark Payton, number two. Mom right there, his grandfather as well. And Payton in this one with a single and a walk, he scored a run. Left field, Gardner. And they go one, two, three. Kidston's retired eight in a row. Time to stretch in Omaha. It's 3 0. Texas with single runs in the third, the fourth, and the fifth. And leading this one 3 0. How you doing there? It's the Horns. Lead this one over Louisville, our first College World Series elimination game. John Chomby, Aaron Boone, Jamie Sire. Here we go. And here from TD Ameritrade Park. We got Texas, we got Louisville, and Parker French has done really good work. I mean, I think all around Texas, who didn't play their best game, certainly in game one against UC Irvine, to this point, French has been outstanding. The defense behind them has been excellent. And where they struggled to cash in runs when they had opportunities against Irvine today, they've been able to cash those in. Rip to left. And Johnson able to pick it up. So Chitton did aboard. Take a look at our bracket coming up tonight. You got UC Irvine and Vanderbilt. And then tomorrow, the early game, another elimination game, Texas Tech and Old Miss. And the nightcap, the two national seeds that are here in Omaha, TCU and Virginia. But again, tonight, Vandy and UC Irvine. Colin Lyman, a pinch hitter, will hit for Corey Ray. Roller along the first baseline goes foul. Trade you. Parker French with that sinking fastball has really relied on it. He's mixed in off speed some, but it's that sinker, particularly into righties, that has gotten Louisville to pound the ball into the ground. He has struck out three. And the wind, a big factor here at TD Ameritrade. Oh. If the flags in center Put field just went flying away, <laughs> you wouldn't sit there and be like, my goodness. You'd say, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, That's I mean, kind of where we are. Especially in our booth here, all these, our papers kind of, we've got them taped down. They're still blowing all over the lot. Two, one. Another good crowd here at TD Ameritrade is the count two and one to Colin Lyman. And now three and one. Dan McConnell urging his team on prior to the start of last inning where he was saying to him quality at bats don't give it bats away. 
They got to get something going here. That kid was taken all the way. It's three and two now. Three, two. Yeah, I think just thinking anything I get three one here down three runs not as the tying run I'll get three two and likely get that try and get that fastball in the outer half. The question is with three two will Louisville put the game in motion here and send the runner I think I think they will. Throw to first close play very close and I actually think Ray was leaning over there excuse me Chittenden was leaning a little bit over there and with three two if he is indeed going you don't want to be leaning too much it's on the hitter to put the ball in play if it's a strike close safe oh wow Well, Parker French, who has a really good move to first base, not overly quick to home plate. Does he get his hand back in? There goes a the runner. Swing and a ball looped out towards the right side. Caught by Marlowe. Double play. I mean, that's the risky run. Well, it's the risk you run, but as a 3-2 count, the runner, you know you're going to be peeking in, and you've got to do a better job of getting back here and understanding that, especially with the wind blowing in, this is going to be a pop-up. And now that's two times where Louisville has run into an out, one time on a line drive off the bat of Cole Sturgeon back in the first inning, and now here on a 3-2 count. You got a pinch hitter in this spot, Danny Rosenbaum, and Peyton puts it away. We're headed to the eighth, the Longhorns leading in this elimination game. Welcome back to the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Texas on top of Louisville, 3 0 as we go to the eighth. Still to come tonight, more baseball, Monday Night Baseball. Cardinals and the Mets getting together. And that brought to you by USAA. And it comes to you at 8 Eastern. Cards and the Mets. A couple of changes now for Louisville. And Colin Lyman will stay in the game and take over for Corey Ray in right. And Danny Rosenbaum will replace Grant K at first base. Top eight, Longhorns lead at three zip. Here's Tres Barrera on the ground and right at Sutton Whiting. One pitch uh, he's still on and it. one out as he's still Rosenbaum on able to hang on to the base. Here, Travis Katzenmeyer say he's still on it. And correct call. Yeah. It was more Rosenbaum just kind of stumbling there. Made it look bad. One down in here, CJ Hinojosa. Three runs, six hits for Texas. No runs, four hits for Louisville. Oh. And the Cardinals have made three errors in this game. Pitch right there. Yeah, I wasn't sure early if Kidston was gonna was gonna stick around. He didn't seem especially sharp, but he's given them a pretty good chance. They haven't played great D. Yeah, I mean that's really it seems like the difference in this game is Texas not only has made all the plays, but has made some outstanding plays, especially against some base dealers for Louisville early in innings when it's kind of taken the running game away or neutralized it and Louisville just not hasn't been as good this afternoon making not only the great play but the routine play and Texas has been able to cash in those runs when they've had scoring opportunities so far today two of the three runs he's allowed today are earned. 
restart. Here we go, it's one, two. Kidston's retired nine in a row. Dan McDonald's team's got to figure out some offense, but first things first, and now time is called. Here we go. Yeah, and there was action really from about the fifth, sixth inning on, but because Kitston's kind of find, found a groove here later in the game, bullpen's begotten quiet, although now they'll get a little bit of action going down there, but. Nick Birdie up and throwing. Yeah, they're outstanding closer. That's ripped down the left side. That one hooking and that hooks foul. No wind. Is that a fair ball? I think it's got a shot. And I know that seems extreme, but I think it's especially it did on a line drive. Yeah, it does seem extreme, but and yeah, that wind is really, really blowing. See how much further Kidston can go. He's at an even 100 pitches. Now the 2-2 to Hinojosa. I think they would love to see him be able to get through this inning and then either way turn over the ninth inning to their outstanding closer. But Nick Birdie will start to, there'll be a little more urgency with that warming up should he allow a base runner here in the eighth. Softly towards the hole, Whiting on the move. That's Yeah, real good job by Whiting of getting around this ball. Really, the slowly hit ball, so he knew he had to hurry, but he does a great job of fighting to get around this so he can get his momentum moving towards first base to get something on that throw. And you can see that throw does just beat Hinojosa at first base. Nice play, Whiting. Two down now, and it's Colin Shaw to hit two out of three. So the Longhorns leading three nothing an elimination yes, game at TD Ameritrade. Still to come tonight, Vanderbilt and UC Irvine. Your old coach Mike Gillespie and the Anteaters. Not really confirmed, but UC Irvine. Basically thought to be one of the final four teams invited into the NCAA tournament. And, and then goes up to Oregon State, one of the top seeds. Comes out of that regional and then goes to Oklahoma State, not an easy place to play. And that is whacked out towards right center and a diving grab by Colin Lyman. Well, it turns into a diving grab because the wind knocks it down. So he thought it was gonna be out by the warning track. He had to kind of circle around and turn it into a diving play on a ball hit very well out to right field. As you see him lay out in right center. We go to the bottom of the eighth and Texas on top three to nothing. And Parker French done a good job with that sinker. When you got the sinker, you need good defense. Time for our pick you up moment brought to you by Enterprise Rent a Car. Well, this is a early in an inning with Sutton Whiting, their best base stealer, but Hinojosa ranging far to his left, the 360 turn, and the strong throw to first. One of many outstanding defensive plays by the Longhorns this afternoon. So Parker French at 88 pitches. Longhorns have activity in the bullpen. And here is Sutton Whiting, who's one out of two, has a single and had that hit stolen from him by Hinojosa. The lefty is Travis Duke, the righty is Morgan Cooper. French has done just such a good job keeping the ball down and by and large locating the fastball. There haven't been a ton of good pitches to hit offered up by the righty. No, and he's a guy that came in having 39 walks in 95 and a third innings. 
which isn't a great rate, but for the most part, with that two-seam fastball, occasionally a four-seam fastball, he's done a good job of spotting it and not allowing free passes to a team that likes to run the bases, and <laughs> right as I say that. That walk the second that he has issued, beg your pardon, third. Longhorns haven't blown a two run lead this season. Meanwhile, Louisville has not been shut out this year. Haven't been shut out this year. And the last time they were shut out, the 2013 College World Series, their opener against Indiana. Dan McDonald's team just desperate for offense. And that's kind of a theme here in Omaha. Inside and it hit him and all of a sudden Louisville is going to bring the tying run to the plate. Well this two seam fastball just gets away from Parker French just really trying to probably start at the middle of the plate and run it in try and get a ground ball just gets away from him too much and Clip Zach Lucas and Louisville now with a probably their best opportunity of the day with their first two men on. Skip Johnson out to the mound. We'll see how much longer they go with Parker French. He's at 94 pitches. And there they are, Cooper and Duke. Cooper Duke and then French on the mound. That's a that's a law firm right there. Yeah, Cooper, and then, Duke and French. Interesting to not see John Curtis, their closer mm -hmm. up. Clearly more comfortable with just using him for one inning if they need him. There's John Curtis. John Shambi, Aaron Boone, Jamie Sire here at the 2014 College World Series. And this is our first elimination game. The loser here goes home. As Texas leads three to nothing, Whiting at second, Lucas at first, and nobody out for the top of the order. It's Kyle Gibson, who's one for two. Bunning third base side. And two into scoring position. Well, good execution here by Louisville and obviously just playing for the two runs here as Gibson gets the ball down the third base line, feeling like if, okay, now we get two runners in scoring position, we can get a couple here. Pull us within a run going into the last inning. We'll take that, but. What's well, your take as far as strategy? I mean, you had six outs left, and now you have five. Yeah, I would be reluctant to do that in that situation, especially with the middle of my lineup coming up. Well, the afternoon is over for Parker French. We get a pitching change here at TD Ameritrade. Back here in Omaha, John Shambi, Aaron Boone, Jamie Sires. We've got a pitching change in the bottom of the eighth. Elimination game, Texas leading Louisville three to nothing. And they go to Travis Duke, the sophomore. Yeah, he's been outstanding against left-handers, primarily a matchup left-hander in probably just to get one hitter, Sturgeon from the left side, fastball, typically in the mid-80s. Really good curveball is primary, secondary pitch, occasional change. You see the earned run average there, just .34 on the season. Been very effective from the left side out of the pen for the Longhorns this season. Parker French has been everything I think the Longhorns could have hoped for, giving them seven plus innings this afternoon. 
And remember, French, he was their Friday night starter for a lot of the year. That means their ace. And eventually, Nathan Thornhill replaced him in that spot. Ball. Outside to Sturgeon, who's 0 for 3. With all that wind, you got hot dog wrappers and all sorts of stuff blowing across the field. That one way high. He's falling behind 2 and 0. Big spot right here. Yeah, throwing a little harder, perhaps overthrowing a little. This is his first appearance, obviously, in the College World Series. Up with that fastball at 89. He's typically in the mid upper 80s range. Through there for a strike. All Parker French could do now is watch. Ball that's out. And Duke missing. He falls behind now three and one. So Sturgeon should get a pretty good pitch, likely a fastball to hit here. Yeah, and you want to pick one side of the plate and really zone in and look to put an aggressive swing on it. If you're Cole Sturgeon, looks like he's seeing the ball pretty well off the left hander. Cut that plate in half. In there. Hunt. Three, two. All filled up now with runners at second and third, one away. Texas three and Louisville nothing. Foul bat. Yes. Well, Travis Duke's best pitch is his breaking ball. That's his best secondary pitch. He has not broken it out yet. A little risky to throw because you don't want to put the tying run on. But if he were to execute one, Sturgeon from the left side, having not seen it, could be very effective. Bounce to the right side. That'll get a run home. So Louisville on the board as Whiting comes in. It's 3 1. Well, a good job here by Travis Duke of getting back into the count and not issuing the free pass. And I think if you're Texas, you're content to trade an out for a run in that situation. And now with two outs, it's going to take a base hit in all likelihood to score Whiting to allow Louisville to inch closer. So they'll let Travis Duke face Solak. Ball. You don't see as much of the Tony La Russa matchup stuff in the college game as you do in the majors. No, and I, I think obviously on a day like today, they know the home runs not in play, especially as you get down here towards the bottom of the order. And worst case, if you were to lose Solak here, he's got the lefty Gardner that he would want Travis Duke to face should he reach. Yep. I said bottom of the order, I meant three hole, but the home run not really in play in this spot, in this ballpark with the wind blowing in. That's a good point. Like. Got him swinging. Great work by Travis Duke. Louisville picks up a run, but the Longhorns lead it. It's a 3 1 game. We're headed to the ninth. And the Longhorn fastball. He's had some outstanding defense behind him. And on balance this afternoon, Parker French, an excellent outing facing elimination for the Longhorns. Right now in line Sorry, for the win. Nice and Augie You're Garrido's good. team trying to stave off elimination. The loser goes home. 
And the winner will stick around. Tonight it'll be Vandy and UC Irvine, 8 Eastern in our nightcap. Bounce through the left side hole. Madison Carter with his first hit. Well, he greets Nick Birdie, one of the best closers in the nation, with a base hit, 97 mile an hour fastball that he runs through the hole. Birdie will. Second round pick of the Minnesota Twins. You see just the .50 earned run average, 18 saves. That strikeout to walk ratio, 64 in just 36 in innings. His fastball will sometimes get in north of triple digits. Mix in a slider, occasional changeup, but primarily he's coming at you with the hard stuff. Bunt pop foul and out of play. Kyle Gibson, who's handled things so well behind the plate today, as per usual. Well, right now, the Cardinals just trying to get three outs, get in the dugout, and figure out a way to score at least two to keep this game going. Second for one, safe at second. And Whiting argues with second base umpire Tony Walsh. Well, it's the right decision by Birdie. It's a slider. He bunts right back to Birdie. He does a good job of setting his feet. He just throws high to Sutton Whiting. Does he get that foot back down? I think he does. Yeah. Another call going the way of the Longhorns on the base pass. You see Whiting up high. Definitely gets that foot down ahead of Madison Carter sliding in, but the Longhorns get the call again here and now have another very good scoring opportunity. So it'll be fielder's choice E1 Louisville. Four errors in this game. A visit to the map. Texas has not only made the routine play, but has made the outstanding play. And Louisville hasn't been quite as tight on defense this afternoon. And we talked about in this College World Series, we felt like pitching and defense, who did it the best, would probably win these games because we thought they'd be low scoring and close. And it's been one of the difference this afternoon. Play. Yeah, just about all the games, low scoring and close. Ball. Gerwitz showing bunt. And I wonder at some point here if Louisville won't put on some kind of play, knowing Texas and their ability to sacrifice, knowing they want to in this situation, where you put on some kind of a wheel play where you charge that third baseman really wanting to cut off the lead runner. But popped in the air, and Gibson no can't come up with that. That would have been a, a heck of a grab. Nice effort. Yeah, he got pretty close to that ball. I thought at first, no chance, but showing a little bit of quickness. Ooh. Landing on the ball doesn't feel good. It's a one and one. With runners at first and second. Texas with single runs in the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Nice block. I mean, really good. He's been good all afternoon in the dirt. You okay? And Madison Carter on second base does a really good job of getting himself into position. If this ball goes any further, than it does. He's in position to get to third base, but an outstanding job by Gibson of blocking that in the center, deadening the ball right in front, and not allowing Carter to get to third base. Ball that's out. So Birdie has come in. Carter's at second, Clemens at first, and Birdie's falling behind. On uh, Gerwitz. 
Bought it back to the mound. Oh, you can hear Gibson yelling three. Instead, he goes to first. And you wonder if Birdie got a little gun shy after throwing high to second base on the previous bunt attempt, but this ball is right back to him, and I think he certainly had a play at third base. As you heard Gibson shouting 3-3-3, three, three, three. but he just wanted to take the sure out at first base. Turns out the sacrifice ends up good for the Longhorns, and two men now in scoring position with one out. So the infield will come in. Louisville try to keep this right here at 3-1. Yeah, Brooks Marlowe up here. Into right field. Lyman coming on. Sliding grab. Tagging from third Michael. Carter. And he'll score. And it's 4-1 Texas. Well, good job all around here. It's a really nice play out in right field, although I still think these outfielders with the wind conditions and especially with that run on third with less than two outs should be playing a little more shallow. And then perhaps this isn't a diving catch, but a catch he's catching at the shoulders, and then maybe there's not a tag opportunity for the Longhorns. But as it is, a huge insurance run here in the top of the ninth now on the sack fly from Marlowe. And now it's Ben Johnson. Credit Brooks Marlowe, by the way, because you're talking about a guy who is one of the elite strikeout pitchers in that spot, needs a strikeout. Yep. And Marlowe, despite not having a hit this afternoon, has had quality at bats in the two games in this College World Series. Oh. Longhorns today have scored four runs, two sack flies, an RBI ground out, and an error. That one at 97 sizzles past Johnson. Johnson has knocked in a run with a sack fly. Got him on the slider, and that is the inning. Longhorns pick up an insurance run. Four, five, six. Jeff Gardner will start it off. Louisville down to their final three outs. Back here in Omaha from TD Ameritrade Park. We go to the bottom of the ninth, and Texas leading 4-1 in this elimination game. Parker French. Seven and a third, one earned run in line for the win. Anthony Kitston did a nice job today. He gave up three runs, two of them earned, but Louisville with four errors in the game. And that, that factored in. And Dan McDonald just trying to get his group going. Louisville. On the season with 50 wins, 16 losses. And right now, they got three more outs. And Travis Duke staying on to face the left handed hitting Gardner. Pr probably one batter, and then likely they would go to Curtis, their closer, who is loosening in the pen now. And there's the good breaking ball we touched on when he came in the first time he's thrown it after falling behind the first hitter he came in he poured in that fastball and then was able to retire Solak to end the inning with fastballs. Ball. Missed that time. I think a one show two. me fastball there to get right back to that breaking ball here on a one two count. Oh, baby. <laughs> you see Tress Pereira back there kind of tilt his head like, ooh, I want it. It's definitely, I think, just off the plate, according to strike zone, a few inches off there, but hitting that glove out there, pretty good pitch. Got him swinging. One up, one down. Duke 
with a couple of punch outs. And a reminder for more World Series coverage, including interactive brackets and highlights, go to NCAA.com. One away, it's Alex Chittenden up. He's one out of three. Slice the other way. Okay. Either a St. Louis Cardinals or a Louisville Cardinals fan gathered that one in. 4 1 Texas in this elimination game. The winner survives. The loser heading on home and will be down to seven teams. Tonight it'll be Vanderbilt going up against UC Irvine. Carl Ravitch, Kyle Peterson, and Jessica Mendoza will have the call. And that'll come your way at 8 Eastern. Augie Garrido, the veteran coach, five times a national champ. Trying to keep his team in the World Series. They lead by three. Chittenden in a one two hole. Here we go. Bounce to short. Hit a Hosa. Two away. Shane Crane is going to hit for Colin Lyman. Shane Crane, one of the catchers on this team, a lot of power. He a tall guy. Hoping he can extend Louisville's stay here in the College World Series. There's a strike to Crane. Louisville got here last year and in 2007. That was. Dan McDonald's first year. Quite a job he's done with this program. Out to short, knocked down, Hinojosa picks it up. Ball game. Texas will stick around. The Longhorns with a 4 1 win, and they eliminate Louisville. Today, Aaron Boone, you got to start with Parker French. Yeah, he was great. Really pounded his fastball in the strike zone and leaned on his defense, and his defense. All afternoon was outstanding. They made some huge plays to keep some of the base stealers for Louisville off the bases, and they were able to make four runs plenty as Travis Duke came on and really pitched very well in relief to close this thing out for the Longhorns. All right, still to come tonight, it'll be Vanderbilt and UC Irvine that'll come your way at 8 Eastern. So Texas wins it here, and Louisville is headed home 4-1 our final of the Longhorns win it coming up next it is Sports Center and again CWS tonight 8 Eastern ESPN 2 Vandy and UC Irvine for Aaron Boone and Jamie Sire I'm John Shambi so long from TD Ameritrade Park